What is up, everybody? And welcome to another Kin Stretch class brought to you by Stretch Effects. My name is Coach Luke, and I'll be taking you through today's 30 minute scapular or shoulder blade focus class. So we look at the shoulder blade, right? So it's just right on the back of the shoulder here. It's, a, it's actually not a true joint, right? A true joint, when you think about the shoulder, is actually where my my humerus meets my glenoid fossa, right? Or my joint. So it's actually the space between the bones, right? So our, our shoulder blade isn't actually a true joint, but it does connect. It is connected by a lot of muscles and ligaments that actually move our shoulders around, right? So we need to have good scapular motion in 360 degrees, right? I need to be able to, what's called, shrug or elevate our shoulder blades. I need to depress or pull down my shoulder blades. I need to be able to protract or kick my shoulder blades forward. I need to be able to retract or pull my shoulder blades together, right? So within those four main motions, we have to be able to take them in all the directions in between that, right? So I need to be able to elevate and protract. I need to be able to depress and retract. I need to be able to move my shoulder blades in all directions so I can have healthy shoulder function, whether it's a push-up and protraction and retraction, whether I'm going up into a shoulder flexion motion or I'm doing, say, a down dog in yoga. The shoulder blades are really the driver kind of um, guide, I should say, for that shoulder joint motion, right? So without healthy shoulder blades, we're not really gonna have true healthy shoulders. So really the focus of today's class is gonna give us kind of an introduction to where those shoulder blades can go. You're gonna get kind of put in different positions, both loaded and unloaded, to kind of get a feel for how the shoulder blades work. And then we're gonna be doing some deep shoulder retraction, and deep shoulder protraction work here. So without further ado, let's go and get started. So we're gonna do our shoulder cars, our shoulder blade cars, from all different positions today. Okay, so we're just gonna start out in our tall kneeling position. Okay, so we have a yoga block. You want to squeeze between your legs, you can go narrow, you can go wide, or you can go really wide. I like to go wide for a lot of people because the wider our base of support, right? So the wider our knees are, the more balance we're going to do. Okay, so what we want to think about is we want to squeeze the, squeeze the block in, right? So that'll get your adductors working here. Also want to squeeze the glutes forward, just kind of like a glute bridge motion, but without extending out my lower back, right? So I want to think ribs stay down, I want to think core is engaged, so I'm not arching, so I can just stay locked in, ribs down position, core is tight, legs are tight, locked in from the bottom down, and then we're just going to start hands at our sides. You can make fists, I like to say like you're trying to punch the ground, right? So that active depression of our shoulder blades is going to keep us out of passive elevation when we don't want it, right? So we're going to punch the ground, right there, stay locked in. What you can do is you can also go open palm, or you can go open fist. So we really want to be able to train in all different positions, right? So for now, we're just going to start fist down towards the floor. And then from here, we're just going to shrug up and then pull down into the pressure. Shrug up and then pull down. Feel as you pull down, you'll kind of feel that under armpit muscles working there. Really feel all the muscles that elevate and depress those shoulder blades. So go one more, just come up and pull down, okay? From here, let's go hands to our sides. If you have like if you have like seams on the side of your shorts, you want to think middle finger or right between your middle and ring finger are on those seams of your shorts. If you don't, you can just imagine that line that just runs right down the side of your legs. You're gonna have an open palm and you're gonna grab, not grab, you're gonna have tension into the sides of your legs. Okay, so from here, I want to think elbows lock out. I'm gonna go from the sides, you can get a better vision of this one. So I'm gonna go elbows locked out on my sides, and I'm just going to protract, so I'm gonna take my shoulders forward in front of me without anything else in my body moving. And keeping my elbows locked out, hands on my sides, I'm going to retract or pull my shoulder blades together. Okay, so what you see a lot of times is people want to do this, right? So that's our elbows, that's our arms going along for the ride, kind of faking shoulder blade retraction. So we want to stay locked out, subtle tension of our hands into the sides of our legs and just work on pulling back and squeezing the shoulder blades together and then going back into protraction. So we call these shoulder blade capsule cars because we're just working on the requisite motions of that full car, which is the full 360 degree motion in both directions. So the last one, we're going to retraction. As we go to retraction, make sure your head's not getting forward and make sure we're not arching 
at that lower back, right? So like we talked about, I want to keep that ribs down position. We don't want our spine acting like shoulder blades, right? So we want the shoulder blades to do what shoulder blades do. We want the spine to act like a spine. But in this case, we're just staying nice and locked in. Okay, so from here, we're gonna put all four of those motions together. But one, mo one kind of thing I always like to note with people is that even though we are hitting four corners of this motion, we don't want to go in like a diamond shaped pattern, right? We want to make a nice big circle because not only do we need to be able to protract, retract, elevate, depress, we need to be able to hit all those points along that circle. Okay, so we're just gonna lock in, hands on our sides. We're gonna squeeze that block with our knees. We're gonna squeeze those glutes forward and we're gonna have our ribs down, core nice and tight. I'm gonna start by just elevating. So as I elevate, my hands can move up and down, right? So we, we can move up and down. We just wanna make sure they don't rotate forward or back, right? We want the arms to stay locked in here. So all that motion is coming from the shoulder blades, okay? So we're up in, the, in elevation. While I'm up, I'm gonna come over the top. I'm gonna to round it out over the top as I come into protraction. From here, I'm gonna continue to protract. Well, now I start to pull down and depress those shoulder blades, and now I'm pulling down and back into retraction. Notice how my hands are still at my sides. I'm retracting now. As I continue to retract, I'm going to elevate, pull up into my ears, and come over again. We're gonna go three reps here. So come back over, tension check throughout the body, hands check on the side of your legs. Now we're back in protraction. We're coming to protraction depression. Now we're fully depressed with those shoulder blades. Now we're going into depression retraction or back down as you'll hear it said. I'm gonna retract. Continue to elevate so I'm shrugging while I'm still pulling back. One more. Now we're gonna round over the top. Last one coming over, down, retract, hands still on my sides, elbows locked out as possible. I'm retracting and I'm shrugging as I come over back into my shrug or fully elevated position. Now let's change direction. So hands on my sides, tension check, glute check. I'm up, now I'm pulling back. So I'm in elevation and retraction. Continue to work on keeping those hands at my sides while I retract. Pull down, pulling down. I'm going to reach forward and still stay at my sides. And our hands can move up and down, just not front and back. So we'll come over again for rep two. Check in with that neck. Make sure we're not jutting the neck forward as we retract. Make sure the ribs stay down. Keep good tension here. One more rep. Come forward. Keep trying to drive forward. Every rep, try to expand that circle a little bit more. Coming over. Retract. Pull back. Ribs down. Glutes tight. Core tight. Come back through, protraction, and up, and back down. Shake that out. That's something that's new for you. That's gonna be something that you're definitely gonna to wanna to practice, right? We talked about, say, push-ups, which we're gonna get into a modified, we'll call it a quadruped position, but the true push-ups are actually a retraction, protraction exercise. Everyone thinks of it as a chest exercise, which it is, you know, it's definitely shoulders, upper back, but it's, it's really dependent on how well our shoulder blades move. So the better you get here, the more active control you have over those shoulder blades, the better push-ups you're gonna feel, the better you're gonna get at them, and the faster you're gonna progress. So, and, and the less stress and strain you'll put on elbows, shoulder joint, everything like that, okay? So from here, we're gonna take that same block. If you have two, you can keep that block in your leg, and then you can just take the other block and bring it right out the front. If you don't, take that block out from your legs, we're going to use this now as we call a blocked scat car. We'll do scat capsule car, scan car, scan. So again, I'm going to go from the side so you can see what we're doing here. Do the same thing that we just did. Okay, we're going to have that block in legs. You got it. Have one block out in front. So again, you can grab it wide. I, I recommend you grab it wide here, but you could definitely do it close as well. It's just different orientations you can play. Okay, so I'm going to be right here, right out in front. This is going to lock me in. Elbows locked out. Ribs are down glutes are tight, and then what you can think about with your neck, it's just like how we want to create an active block consciously, so we don't passively jet that neck forward, right? So think, it's a it's an odd cue for a lot of people, but think, make a double chin, right? Like, think I'm trying to pull my chin, not just down, right? So I just want to think, pull my head back. So as I come from here, right, instead of doing this, I want to think chin, 
comes back as if you were trying to create a double chin. And then I'm just gonna lock everything in so everything is nice and stacked. I'm gonna grab this block here, glutes are tight, ribs are down. And here, I'm just going to protract, reach those shoulder blades forward. I wanna make sure I don't flex my spine, right? That'd be thoracic flexion. I wanna make sure everything stays locked. And I just protract. From here, everything stays locked in and retract. From there, I protract and retract. Let's go two more there. Protract, retract, protract, and retract. Okay, so our fifth rep, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hold, okay? We're gonna go five second hold and protraction, trying to get more without flexing that upper back thoracic spine. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna protract again, and we're just gonna keep reaching for five, four, try to get more, try to get more, three, two, one. Okay, from here, take that retraction, pull straight back again, core tight, glutes tight, squeeze, 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 head still, five, keep swinging, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, so that was protraction, retraction. We did the elevation depression already from this position here. Okay, so we're just gonna go right back to a stack position. So we're not gonna protract or retract, we're just gonna lock those shoulders in. Just get a feel for what we call elevation, so that shrug up and depression. So you'll feel, do those right, you'll feel those and those under your armpits, right? So I'm here, locked in, elevate, depress. Elevate, depress. That's three, elevate, depress. Last one, again, we're gonna hold five. We're gonna come up, shrug, one, two, three, four, five. Last one, depress, pull down, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, from here, we're just gonna go straight into our scapular cars with the block. So if you were in tall kneeling, you can stay in tall kneeling, or you come down to collapse kneeling. So what collapse kneeling allows us to do is kind of put ourselves a little bit at ease from the lower body. It makes it easier to keep those ribs down, keep that core tight. What's gonna happen, if you felt like when we were in these ones, or if we were in these ones, you felt like you wanted to really arch, but having the block here is gonna make it even harder not to. Right, so if you felt like you were arching, you felt like you were lifting the rib cage, really work on that ribs down position core tight. So that's really good. Getting in this position is really gonna make it easier to, to feel this while we get really focus here. Okay, so we call this collapse kneeling. Sit on your heels. If that's uncomfortable for you, you can sit on one of your other blocks. You can sit on a pillow. You can sit on something that lifts you up a little bit to take some pressure off the knees if that's uncomfortable. Okay, so we're gonna do five reps. Each position, I mean each direction, okay? From this block position. So block out straight out in front, straight out from those shoulders. We're going to elevate, shrug up, try to touch your ears with your shoulders. And protract, reach forward, depress, pull back and down, squeeze my shoulder blades together, shrug up. That is one. We're going to come over, around, and squeeze. Two. Over, ribs stay down, core stays tight, legs are tight, elbows are tight. Up and over. Three for the next two from the side. Up here, forward, over the top, squeeze back, squeeze together, back over. That's four. We got one more. Squeeze hard up, over, and five. Okay, let's just reverse that. Reach forward, shrug up, pull back. Squeeze together and pull down. That's what most people probably need to work on, so take your time there. And one, up, over, squeeze, down, two, reach forward, pull up, squeeze back, and down, three, last two, nice and easy, nice and slow, four, should be burning right about now. Up, over, squeeze our shoulder blades together, pull back, and down. Very nice. From there, you can throw that block 
off to the side. We're gonna go into the same motion, right? So protraction, retraction, elevation, depression from a quadruped position. Okay, so we call these, this is our intro into what we call loaded scap cars, right? So loaded just means we got some weight now coming down onto those shoulder blades so we can actually move them under some load, right? So this would be level one. Eventually, we're not gonna move today. You would have level two, and then you can work into level three, or really any variation that you can kind of think of. But that's, like I said, down the road, that's something that you don't really need to worry about right now because really what we're trying to focus on is really mastering the motion before we throw too much complexity or too much challenge into it, right? So be in quadruped position, so I have hands right under my shoulders, knees right under my hips. If you want to tuck your toes, you can tuck your toes. If not, go straight into kind of plantar flex ankle position. Just like we did the other ones, let's start just nice tech core positions that a lot of people, as they, again, like I said, as they retract, they're gonna want to really arch their lower back. So really as much as you can, we'll have some curvature, that is totally normal. Your spine is a natural curve in your lower back, but we just want to make sure that we're not mistaking retraction for lumbar extension. Okay, core's engaged, actively nice and tight. With the hands, you can imagine you're trying to pull the ground apart steadily in between those hands. Right? So you got a line coming down your hands. I'm trying to pull it apart. Right? So as I pull apart, that just gives me subtle tension in my shoulders. From here, I'm just going to retract and protract. So five reps there. Slowly retract, slowly protract. Slowly retract, slowly protract, that is three, slowly retract, slowly protract, four, four more, slowly retract, so feel that squeeze, and the last one is slowly protract, so keep pressing, 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 keep trying to press away more without flexing your upper back, so here, press away, press away, and relax. This is uncomfortable for the wrists. You can always go into a fist kind of position. That will just stack your wrists and make it a little more, a little more comfortable if you get some pain or some pinching in here, right? And then you want to work through or into any pain or pinching, especially on the closing side of that joint, right? So this would be the closing side of ankle, or wrist, I should say, extension, right? So from here, I'm going to stack the shoulders again, right? So I don't want to, I'm not going to protract or retract in this case. Which will be right in the center. Again, a little bit. From here, I'm just going to shrug, pull my shoulders up to my ears, and press. Right. So if it's any good, the other ones should feel right on the underside of that armpit there. That's one. Shrug. Pull down. Two. Shrug. Pull down. Three. Shrug. Pull down. Four, last one, pull up to the ears, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Last one, pull down, squeeze, squeeze, and squeeze. So that was our requisite motion, right? That was elevation depression and retraction, protraction. From here, we will go right into our full scapular part, right? So this position can be kind of funky if you've never done this before, if you're kind of new to the scapular part. So what I tell people is if you were going through the motion, right, scapular retraction, protraction, all this motion, and you kind of get lost and you're like, wait, what direction was I going? How should I, you know, how should I readjust? I would tell people go right back to your center, right back to retraction, and then just go in one of the two directions. Okay? This is really, I mean, we're doing we're gonna do five reps each direction, but really what we want to do is you want to accumulate reps, right? So my, when some of my clients or people ask me like, how many reps should I do? I tell them a million, right? Because there's really no set amount of reps you should do. What I tell people is you should just do more, right? So if you feel like, oh, did I be sick in one direction, four in the other, that's okay. Because as you accumulate more reps throughout your day, throughout your training session, throughout your life, it's really not gonna matter, you know, if you did five reps today or seven reps on the other direction, right? So it's really just about doing more, getting more practice and going slow, especially going slow through the directions that you feel most uncomfortable with, it would feel sticky, but you don't move well. Most people don't move super well into the retraction and depression. 
especially without arching that back, right? So I tell people just go really slow through there. If you want to just break that motion down and just work through that retraction depression, by all means, go for it. Okay, so we're just gonna go back in two, quadruped, hands are in my shoulders, knees under my hips. Give yourself a subtle core tension. Take a breath in, so embrace that core. And we're just gonna start in retraction. We're going to shrug, so probate. Protract on protracted, press, right? So like I said, we want to make circles here. We're just going to start, it's kind of nice and segmental so we can really feel the direction that we're going and then we'll, we'll become more circular as we go. Okay, so we retract, shrug, press, hold in. That's two, retract, shrug, depress, or sorry, protract, depress. We have two more, retract, shrug, Protract, press. Nice big circle here, over, and up in here. Let's go and shrug with reverse breath. Retract. I said this is going to be the work, right? Retract, pull down, and press. One, pull, two, retract, pull down. Two more. Four. Just here, real quick. Last one. We're going to shrug, retract, hold down, press away, come back to our start position. Nice. Right, so if you ever feel like you get lost, go right back to retraction, and then you can shrug, or hold down, and move in from there. Like we said, if there's any uncomfortability in the wrist, you can definitely go into the knuckle position. Again, like I said, the more practice you get with that, the better it's going to feel. I know a lot of people, I've worked with a lot of people who've had a lot of shoulder blade, I don't want to call it dysfunction, but pain and lack of motion in one direction or the other. That just by practicing those on a daily basis, session by session, day by day, week by week, you can see improvements in how it moves. And you can kind of start to improve all directions. So whatever they're doing, right? Whether they're doing push-ups, whether they're, not, I mean, not even in the gym, right? Whether they're in their daily life, they're just gonna get better shoulder blade motion, they're just gonna get better shoulder function, all the way up the chain, all the way down the chain, it's just gonna feel better, right? So the last thing we're gonna do today is what we call prone, which is going on our stomach, scapular retraction lift-offs, okay? So I'm gonna explain this real quick, we'll go into some reps, and then we'll go from there, okay? So what we, what we wanna think about with these is, retract my shoulder blades and really try to squeeze my shoulder blades together as tight as I can, right? It may be a new situation for you, but that's important. So we call, I, what I call deep scapular retraction, right? So I'm going to be in a prone position, which is laying on my stomach. Even though I'm laying on my stomach, I don't want to think just go passing with my core, right? So I want to think, tuck that tailbone under me. If you have a block and squeeze a block between your legs, that will allow you just to create more tension through your lower body. You don't have a block. You can just squeeze your legs together, nice and tight. I'm gonna squeeze block because I have it, right? So here, and then still continue to try to tuck that tailbone almost like you're trying to lift your belly button off the floor, okay? So from here, I'm just gonna let it face down. I'm gonna have my knuckles. So in my case, I'll be straight down from my elbows. If you're really mobile, like really mobile, you can go onto a block. Or if you feel like you get to here, and you could get lift off from your shoulder blades, right? So I want to think of lift my fists off the floor. You can just bring those fists down, to find a position where you could go from, right? So really, you can really go from here and lift from there, right? You want to get lift shoulder blades. So you want to at least have some bend in the elbow, so it's not just shoulder extension. I want to squeeze shoulder blades to lift off, right? So what I'm going to do, I'll demonstrate, and then we'll do some reps. I'm going to think, tuck my tailbone. That will be down. My elbows will think squeeze up and in, right? So I want to squeeze my shoulder blades together even from the start, right? So my elbows are not out here, but they're squeezing together. I will be face down, I'll have my ribs down, core tight, and then I'll just retract my shoulder blades and come back down. To come back down, we don't want to just hunt the ground now and stay up, and then slowly come back down. If you find you can get off the ground more than an inch or two, you can just lift your hands a little bit higher, make it more challenging. If you're up here and you feel like you can get way off, then you've got a block. Not really necessary for most people. 
Okay, so we're gonna do 10 scapular retraction lift ups here. So I'm gonna think, find my position, core is tight, squeeze that block, head is straight down, elbows start by squeezing in already, and as I pull up, my elbows will squeeze in and up. Okay, so it's set, and lift, and back down, that's one. And lift, and back down, that's two. And lift. Back down. Three. And lift. Back down. Four. And lift. Back down. Five. And lift. Back down. Six.